exit cycle. So there's a relationship between these two cycles. Arginine, this is a dandy way of making arginine. So if the cell needs arginine, it's going to run this cycle over to here, and that's going to suck off all the arginine that it wants. Arginine is the source of urea in our bodies in the urea cycle. Because if we clip off this top part, we've got urea, and then we've got ornithine again. Now, the directions that we're going here, we can go backwards, we can go forwards, we can pull things off as we need. The, this cycle is important for providing cells what it needs or providing ways of getting rid of nitrogen in the form of breaking off urea and then excreting it. Okay. Make sense? You guys look tired. I wish I had a song. I don't have a song. All right. Links to the citric acid cycle. I've already told you what those are, so we're not going to mess with that. And yes, question. Yes. I'm not sure I understand the question. The kidney does a job of filtering things. Yeah, so there's like a special receptor on the kidney? No, nope. it's, just, it's just a concentration thing. It just, it just passes on through. Yep. As far as I know, I'm not a kidney expert. Yes, Stuart. Say it again. It's a good question. As far as I know, it's, it's abundant in, in all cells. Because all cells have to deal with the issue of balancing their nitrogen. And then it's, it's gone. Yeah. You're not doing what? No, no, generally not. No. Okay. Um, well, we have some time, and we have to talk about nucleotide metabolism. All right. So we're going to do it in a very cursory fashion. I'm going through this, I know, kind of fast, and you're not responsible for anything more than what I talk about. All right? So keep that in mind as I'm going through kind of fast here. Purines. Our body makes nucleotides. I always take people on tours of my department, and I take them into a lab that does nucleotide metabolism. And I said, you know, we think about DNA, and we think about RNA, and we think, wow, I know how they're made. I just take a polymerase, I take DNTPs, I start with a template, and bang, I've got a duplex. That works. And it makes very good sense, and it's very simple to understand. And then I said, and where do you suppose those nucleotides came from? And it's something we don't think about. Uh, those nucleotides came from the cell. The cell had to make them. And making nucleotides by cells is critical because if cells don't make the proper amount of nucleotides, let's say they make too much G and not enough C, for example, all right? If they make too much of nucleotides, they have what we call a pool imbalance. And pool imbalances are very big problems because they cause cells to mutate. Pool imbalances favor mutations strongly. So cells that have problems with balancing the proper amounts of nucleotides are very much prone to having mutations, and mutations, of course, in the long term are not good for the life of the cell, or at least in the short term are not good for the life of the cell. Okay. Now, nucleotides come from very simple origins. Very, very simple origins. This shows a schematic of a purine ring. Purine rings have a six-member and a five-member ring. No, you don't even know where all, all those come from. But I show you this to illustrate to you how simple it is to make a purine ring. We start with simple compounds. Here's glutamine. Here's aspartic acid. Here's carbon dioxide. Here's glycine. Okay? Yeah, there's a, a carbon from this complicated guy, and there's a carbon from this complicated guy. But these complicated guys are found in every cell on the face of the earth. It's not surprising that when we look in 
meteorites that fall from outer space, we actually see things like purines because they can be assembled from very, very simple compounds. Okay? We know that the primordial Earth had an abundance of very, very simple compounds, and it's not a stretch to see how the first nucleotides, the first bases and first nucleotides, appeared on the face of the Earth because those randomness of chemical reactions ultimately put them together. So this, what you see for purines is also true for pyrimidines. They come from very, very simple molecules. OK. This illustrates a portion of the pathway of making purine nucleotides, a portion. OK. It shows a critical portion. Now, what you haven't seen is how we got to this starting molecule. This starting molecule is called IMP. Okay. IMP, anybody remember I in the scheme of things? You remember? It's inosine. And where have you seen inosine before? The wobble base. Very good. Okay. The wobble base had inosine in it. It turns out inosine appears during the synthesis, the synthesis pathway that leads to AMP and GMP. Now I show you this not to just gobble your mind up with stuff, but to give you an idea about how much attention cells pay to balancing the proper amounts of, of different nucleotides. Okay? IMP is a branch point between GMP, guanosine monophosphate, and AMP, adenosine monophosphate. One branch goes this direction, one branch goes this direction. All right. What's the bottom line of this? Well, let's look at how these guys are made. If we go in this direction, we notice that, oh, there's some aspartate, there's some various things that are up there. But notice, energy. What's the energy source? GTP. GTP is used to make AMP. If we look on this pathway, what do we see? What's the energy source? ATP is used to make GMP. Okay? Now, so we see a balance there. If we have a lot of ATP, then we can make some GMP. If we have a lot of GTP, we can make some AMP. This is one set of balance. Another set of balance is the fact that GMP inhibits this enzyme. That is, GMP inhibits its own synthesis. And AMP inhibits this enzyme. AMP inhibits its own synthesis. Now, this means that if we have too much AMP, it turns its own synthesis off. If we have too much GMP, it turns its own synthesis off. That, combined with what I've just told you about the different amounts of the triphosphates, allow the cell to balance properly the amount of AMP and GMP that it makes. We'll talk about how we get to triphosphates in a minute. Does that make sense? OK, you guys are very agreeable today. All right. When we look at the regulation, I've already shown you one. So regulation occurring right here. OK. There's also a regulation for the very first reaction. We're not going to worry about it here, but the very first reaction is regulated by GTP, ATP, ADP, AMP. Notice that all of the different forms of the purines inhibit the first enzyme in the pathway. If we have too much in the way of purines, this whole pathway is turned off. Now, I'll tell you something that's very cool about that. Then I'll probably shut up for the day. The very cool thing about that is the enzyme that's up here is only completely turned off if both are present. If I only have guanines present, the enzyme is left a little bit active. That means the enzyme can make a little bit of this, a little bit of this, and what's going to happen when it gets to IMP? Well, it's not going to go this direction because this enzyme is going to be cut off. It's going to go this direction. So if cells have a lot of Gs but no As, it can continue starting from scratch to make As. And only As will be made until things get caught up. Pretty cool. 
The balances that cells do for nucleotides are the most elaborate balances they do in terms of metabolites, and they do it because they're avoiding that mutation tendency if they make too much or too little of, 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 a, of a nucleotide. Okay, now, the last thing I will tell you is I have three surprises for you on Friday. So I hope you'll be here for Friday. And you've seen one or two surprises, but you've never seen three. You're going to see three surprises on Friday. Okay? See you on Friday. If you didn't get a card, come get a card. If you didn't get a card, you got a card. They are. Um, if the cell has a lot of energy, wouldn't they want to be making bases so they can divide or... They do, but if, if they've got too much in the way of appearing, they want to start making primitives. There's two balances they have to think, actually four balances they have to think about. Okay? Thank you. Okay. There you go. Can I ask you a question? Yes. So as far as, like... Uh -huh. Yep. Stay away from like like the plague. They're full of trans fat. Well, that's what I thought. My mom has the smart family. Smart and it says on it, it says no. contains no trans fat. Yeah, but I okay. was trying to tell her that it's still. No doesn't mean no. That's right. Exactly. So, okay. Yes. Yes. There's a good thing for your father to avoid. It's better. You shouldn't have a whole lot of either, but, but margarine is worse than butter. She's been giving him that instead of butter, giving that it's better. She's not doing him any favors. So I just have a random question as part of your dog okay. question thing. Um, yeah. But so if a Dalmatian and another breed of dog yep. had a puppy, would it yep. produce your There's no set rule. There's, there's no set rule. So, so it's just uh, the Dalmatian pathway is that they're missing an enzyme that leads them to having only an uh, option for uric acid. So uh, most likely they would make, they would not make uric acid, but it, it, it depends. Okay. I mean, they, they, would, they, they would make urea, but but it, it really depends. Yeah. All right. You got a breed of Dalmatian? No, I don't. But no. it's, 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 I don't know, it's just really weird to me that just like one type of dog. It is weird. It yeah. is weird. Yeah. Dalmatians are odd dogs. Yeah. Yep. Can I grab a note card also? Thank you. Sure. Take care. See you around.